Hello everyone, welcome to the Red Men TV. It's the match preview show ahead of Crystal Palace versus Liverpool this Saturday lunchtime. Much to Jurgen Klopp's delight, I'm sure, <laughs> as the TNT presenter found out today. I'm Steve Hood, joined by Lewis Aspinall and by Ian Young to have a little look ahead to this one. Um, I'm bored of the half 12 stuff, so I'm not going to do it. I'll be honest, it's been done to <laughs> death. It is what it is. The game's on there now. Yeah, no one's happy about it. It, it is what it is. We're cracking on. As it, again, even that fellow, uh, I found out when Jürgen didn't exactly take, take, <laughs> so take, take too, did not take too kindly to it. If no you haven't seen it, go and watch it. Yeah, it wasn't great. Um, it was funny. I was watching like, Steve McManaman's face, like, oh. Um, <laughs> but it, this is interesting. I'll start with you on, Lewis. Yeah. Um, we've just been speaking a little bit off air, but... Notoriously, Palace can be quite a tough challenge. You, you look at fixtures on the on the fix list, and if this was someone else going to Palace, you go, "That's a tricky one." That mm. especially again, the Saturday lunchtime thing, etc., etc. Et Palace themselves are actually in really poor form. Mm. There's actually a lot of pressure under Hodgson on Hodgson rather. He went full Hodge the other day, <laughs> saying, "You know, these fans have been spoiled." Like he, he's done it already. They're on his back again. Like it seems to be. It just feels like a. These are the type of games that if you want to be a champion, you just you got. You, it's not going to be pretty. Probably isn't going to be pretty, but you've got to just go and grind one out. Yeah, I mean, well, that Sheffield the other day, that was one of those like bog standards. You have to get those three points at those grounds, and look, we know Sellers Park's a difficult place to go to. Not necessarily because of the team, but the fans. They are like some of the best fans in the league for, voc- for like being vocal and loud. We just have to go there and not let the pressure get to us on it. Uh, Hodgson's got a really good record of shutting up shop against the big teams seen against City and United and Chelsea in the past so you know as long as we can go there handle the pressure of the crowd and just have a go at them I see no reason why we can't come back with the three points I suppose as well Ian the intestine was he got beat the other day at home by Bournemouth and he got booed off that's what Hodgson that's why he ended up speaking his comments about, about what he said so it's one of those if you give them any encouragement the Palace fans and lose right they'll, they'll take it but also if they're two down early and, and uh, you know they, they showed the other day the start the frustrations are mm. they're, they're teething on the edge there with this Hodgson thing again they've been here for so long and I'm sure they all love them but at some point it's like can we just can we have something else I feel like in Liverpool like, like if you give them a sniff they'll take it but again if you can if you can get it yourselves ahead or you can do what you did to Sheffield the other day and get a, a relatively earlier goal it, it, it could turn against Crystal Palace that, that atmosphere I suppose yeah I think the last couple of games we've played we've started not on our front foot we've sort of eased ourselves into the game I think this is the game where if we go for the full force let's see a bit of rock and roll football at the start I think it's one of the games that we could be all by our time if we do things properly it's also one of them though because of the the ground that we're at it's another one where the fans are close to the pitch and they're the Palace fans are one of the best uh, some of the best fans in the league so if they get behind them and we allow them and we don't score early on, it could be trickier than what it should be. Yeah, absolutely. We'll, we'll see how it all pans out. We'll talk about Liverpool and their conundrums and team selections later. See if we've got any. Um, see if we've got any. What's the word? Clues, hints, yeah. etc. After Sheffield, which I think we might have done. By the way, we are recording this before Jurgen Klopp's press conference, so bear in, we'll bear that in mind. We will do a news update show a bit later on, guys. So we'll react to any news there. But we think we know who is and isn't available so far. We'll touch on that in a minute. But speaking of injuries, Lewis, we touched on it before. Probably two of Crystal Palace's best players mm. are definitely out. So Decore is out. Eze is out. They also lost uh, Tyreek Mitchell the other mm. day. Um, I'd be shocked if he got went off injury with a hip injury on Wednesday and played yeah. Saturday afternoon, for example. Rob Holding still out. So they, they are a depleted side. They, yeah. now they've got Elise back, and that's a bonus for them. They've got Eduardo, who's been in relatively good goal scoring form. Yeah. He scored seven goals in all comps, six in the league, so he's doing okay for them. But we are getting a little bit of an understrength crystal policy. Yeah, like I say, Decore and Eze are certainly two of their better yeah. players, and they're both going to be missing, which is you know sad for them, but it's a bit of a boost for Liverpool. Yeah, yeah of course. And these are the times when you've got to take advantage of those situations. Every team's got injuries at the minute, everyone's suffering with them. Palace, especially, like you mentioned, you know, Eze being such a key player, he'd fit into a lot of Premier League sides. Him being missing is a big, a big blow for them. Decore um, d- defensively is outstanding, so that's a really well, good thing. A lot of people fans want to sign him. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I would have been happier if it's just bad the price tag. But yeah. I feel sorry for Palace in the sense of yes, they've got the injuries. I feel like the players they've got are wasted under Hodgson. They've got such a good attacking side, and even with Eze and that's still missing. They're still, like you mentioned, Elise, Edward still scoring goals. So. Are you sure? They've got, yeah, they've got goals in the team. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's you know, there's there's still good players there. We just need to focus on our team more than anything. Um, 
because we've seen in the past like Luton for example doesn't matter who you play and anyone can turn up and get a result so as long as we just play our game to the best of our ability you know, that's all that really matters the one thing they've got going for I mean, and, and, and I was looking at the, who played the other day at the back and I, I understand they lost Mitchell but they have got a bit of a, it'll be probably Ward Anderson Gay. I imagine you might see a little bit of Nathaniel Klein in this mm. one I, I don't know but their record actually they don't score many they only score 14 and 15 and like say one player scored 6 of those but they've only conceded 21 goals and if you look in the bottom half of the league but they're on the same amount of conceded as Brentford in 11 only Everton in the bottom half have, have conceded fewer and Everton are only in the bottom half because of the deduction you know like, there are teams in that bottom half table Sheffield have left 41 Burnley 33 Luton 30 Forest 27 Bournemouth 30 Palace are the outlier in that mm. they, 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 are, they are hard to down. they've got two very good centre halves Mark Gaze being linked with Liverpool again today it does feel like they are the type of team who can frustrate yeah, you know, if, you, if you haven't got your striking boots on your shooting boots on they, they, they are certainly they, they're solid at the back it's something that Hodgson's been doing all his career isn't he and he, he he thrives on the big performances from the smaller teams against the big teams it's something he always does he's always pulled them out of his hat mm. and that's something you've got to be very very wary of um, but we've got to remember that we're Liverpool we're in the form we are now if we go in there and we play to the best of our ability Palace shouldn't be an issue for us they should not be a problem mm. I think yeah, Liverpool's got to get the job done and, and, and see where it goes. Um, we might as well touch upon the Reds now, then we'll move on from from the Palace stuff a little bit. I'll, st- I'll stick with you, Ian. Um, we learned a lot on Wednesday. Jürgen, in the end, because it, when, you get the, you get the, when you get the result, you get like that, and you've managed the minutes of a lot of players. He's got he's got a, quite a few options. The, we're, we're waiting and seeing on Alexis McAllister. He, uh, he got a cut to his knee, he had to get stitches in it, uh, so we'll see how he is. Uh, other than that, we know who we have and haven't got. Now, not touch woods again, we'll find out in the press conference, but it looks like everyone else can be available. He managed to give Tim Akas a rest. He got Salah off, he got Diaz off. We saw uh, McAllister again, we'll see how he is. He, he gets some time off as well. It does feel like jürgen has got plenty of options. We have got injuries, don't, and, and especially at the back, it's a bit threadbare. But Wednesday night, give him a little, the fact that he what he was able to do in terms of rest and rotation does feel like we've got a few more options than maybe if we if it had been, you know, Salah had played 90 and Diaz had played 90 and Timokas had played 90. He, he has given himself a little bit more flexibility there. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think he might still go with the likes of Gomez at left-back on Saturday just because of the two big games we've got coming up with United and Arsenal. So I think we've got to be really, really careful with our centre-backs now because of Joe Matip. So I can't see Canate playing on mm. Saturday. I think that... I think... I'm not sure whether he'll either go with Joe Gomez. Oh no, Joe Gomez left back. He might bring him in centre back actually, and bring him back to Cass in just because we've got to be so careful with Canate now because of Joel's injury. You've got options there, but do you, do you risk Kwanzaa? I mean, I, he, I think that I think he's definitely going to play on Thursday in that Europa League. Game. Europa I think League that's what game, he's going yeah. to play. See, if, if I was picking a back four, I would uh, start there and I'd be interested. We'll see. By the way, the goalkeeper. There's, again, we'll find out later, but there could be an option here. We'll, as, as it stands, we don't know. So we'll presume it's Keller, but there was talk. I mean, Alison put a, an Instagram story out of his gloves, didn't he? And everyone was like, wow, is Ali. So we'll see, we'll see on that one. Hopefully he is. We don't know that yet. In terms of the back four, it was Gomez, Van Dijk, Canate, Trent. Mm. I'll be honest, I think it's going to be Simicash, Van Dijk, Canate, Trent. I think, he, I think he'll ask all three mm. dudes to go again. He could he could move Gomez inside, but I think he I think Ian's right now. We're gonna to have to be. I don't think he'll ever want three of the four of them on the pitch yeah, at the same yeah. time because yeah, that's a risk. That, yeah. so, that, that, so it it probably feels like it, Costas probably does come back in. Mm. I'm guessing he'll stick with Ibu. I'd like to think so, but I would like Kwanza to get a go. I, I think that he's proven he can handle the pressure in situations. He came on against Newcastle Wolves. He played there, yeah. so I think if he was to come in, I wouldn't look at it as yeah, oh yeah. god, I'd, I'd be more than happy with that. Okay. I agree, though. I think we have to be conservative now. There's a lot of games coming up, a lot of big games coming up. Simi Cass's left back for me is a pretty nailed on starter. Van Dyke, I'd have to agree, though. I do think that this would be the Canate game and then give him that midweek rest going into the next game, which is. Who's the one after Palace? United. Is it United? So, yeah, I think, I think you're right there. Um, give him that midweek rest and just rotate the squad. We've got the players to do it who are all very versatile. There's no reason not to use the player. Use them or lose them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. It, it feels to me like he, he probably will. Costas is going to have to play because he's not going to have two weeks off. No. You can just say to him, listen, don't, don't, go, don't worry about affairs. The yeah. Luke Chambers can play in in, in, in Gilwag, in, mm. in Union Gilwag. It's quicker than Gomez it. as well against the Lise. Well, yeah. also, it's just an attacking threat. Yeah, yeah. It's just yeah. Liverpool, needs, Liverpool want to score goals. Let's move into midfield. Then, Ian, I'll start with you. Um, 
So Boslai did play 90 minutes, as we all know, because he got that late goal. Um, Endo played 90 minutes as well. McAllister went off injured. He did bring on Jones, he brought on Gravenberg, he brought on Elliott. Let's start at number six then. I've got a feeling he might ask Endo to go again, especially we'll see with what this McAllister situation is. Would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah. I can't see McAllister having stitches on Wednesday and then playing early mm. on Saturday. I, I just can't see that happening. But I think Endo should play anyway just because he's building a bit of momentum up. He's had two good, really good games on the, on the trot there and taking them out might damage that momentum. So I'd, 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 I'd keep him in and then if you're going to rest him, rest him on Thursday night in the Europa League. Mm. Do you agree? Yeah, uh, Endo, I think he's proven now that he's capable in these kind of games against the sides where you have to just break up play, uh, just a bit of physicality. And at Selhurst Park, someone like that who's just going to commit to a tackle, you know, get the fans riled up, I think that's perfect for this situation. I agree, McAllister's not going to come back straight away. There's no reason to risk him, uh, given the rest if you need to. And we've got we've got Jones, we've still got Elliot, we've still got Gravenberg, so there's no point risking it give Endo the opportunity to just be that holding midfielder and maybe like give Sobersly a little bit of a rest maybe bring him on a bit later on um, Endo, Jones and Gravenberch for me I'd be, I'd be happy with that just to start things off and then later on when legs start to get tired from Palace bring on the big guns I wouldn't be shocked if Harvey Ellis started though Ian on that right hand side of the Harvey. field yeah. uh, I, I think it'll be one of Gravenberch or Jones if, if, if we think Endo's going to play I agree. If McAllister's out, then that means Gravenberg or Jones manages takes his pick, and then you've got right hand side. It, isn't, it might just be Sobers like again. He's, he's a machine. It yeah. could be he's playing all. He plays a lot of footy, and he might again. He might just be one who go again for me, and I'll give you a week off, and we'll see you at Man United. So we'll see how it goes. But if it is right hand side of the field, it feels like Harvey's probably the na- most natural replacement for Sobers in terms of position, if not style of play. Well, for me, Harvey Elliott, you, I think you should play more when we're playing against a team who's going to all sit back and just. Go back with two low blocks because I think he's really good at finding space and finding that ball, finding the ball between the lines. He's such an intelligent footballer for his age. I mean, I'm, I'm really a fanboy, I absolutely love him. He's just so unlucky that he's got so many good midfielders ahead of him. I think any other Premiership team outside the top four, he absolutely walks into the mm-hmm. walks into the team. But I'd like to see him get a goal. I'd like to see him get a goal when it's not a Europa League game. I'd like to see him have a goal in the beginning because I think he's, we know he's ready. He, mm-hmm. He's done it for years. But I think this season, when he comes on, he looks he looks even better than what he's looked in previous seasons and he looks like he's kicked on this season and I don't know whether that's just because he's playing less minutes so he's playing he's probably playing the minutes he should be for the age he is but I just think you ask him to do a job when he comes on he does it if you want him to get the game by the stroke of the neck and find that pass he can do that if the game's too manic and you want somebody to calm the game down Harvey Elliott can also do that as well and I think being 20 years of age Mm. It's some skills. Yeah, absolutely. We'll talk about the strikers and the options Jürgen's got in a minute. Before we do, guys, I do have to give this away. We've got our latest ready. I'll come on that one there for me. There we go. Look at that. It is a signed copy of Spice Up Your Life by Jonathan Ashby. There you go. Autograph signed. You can't see that on the cameras. Nothing bad. The author himself. Every day in December, we are doing draws for one of our Red Men Plus Legend subscribers. We've already given away seven prizes. Yeah, seven. I was right. Including some signed memorabilia. Yeah, well, today we're going to give another autograph graft edition like I say Spice of Your Life the, the story of Liverpool's 1990s renaissance there's Roy Evans you've got who's that Stan Collymore <laughs> you've, got, you've, got, you've got the white suit yeah brilliant Liverpool so yeah we're going to give that away right now to one of our legend subscribers over on Redmen Plus so I've got the wheel I threw the, the names are in there we're going to give it a big old spin and whoever's name pops out of here will get the prize well done congratulations the book the signed book is on its way to BCAV35 BKAV35. We'll be in touch with you, Sarah or Madam. I don't I couldn't I can't begin <laughs> to guess on that username, but yeah, that is on its way to you. We'll be doing another draw, by the way. We're doing a news update show in about an hour or two's time. Then we'll do another one. We owe you as a draw, basically, because um we didn't do one yesterday. So actually that was the seventh prize that we've given away. There'll be an eighth prize given away in about an hour or so's time. So yeah, if you want to get involved, redmenplus.com, sign up as a legend. We've still got loads of stuff to give away. There's a dear couch sign shirt, an Ibu Kanate sign shirt. 
a Jamie Carragher signed programme, got gloves signed by Chris Kirkland, loads of other boss stuff, artwork figures, loads and loads of other stuff. So get yourselves involved if you want. Right then, let's crack on, gentlemen, if you don't mind. Um, Lewis, I'm going to trust you to keep that book safe, mate, because oh, yeah. I will spill my tea on it, as I nearly did before. <laughs> it was nearly an absolute disaster. That I'd have been, um, I'd have been uh, yeah, panicked. I'd have been on the phone to Jonathan trying to get another copy off him. Um, strikers, then. We, 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 mm. we, so Salah goes off, and Salah will start. So we don't have to worry yeah, about yeah. that. Still chasing goal 200, by the way. Um, is it just me, or does it look like Salah's desperate to score goal 200? Like... Snatching at things, maybe yeah. he looks. I know he's always desperate to score. Don't get me wrong, he's Mo Salah, but I felt it feels like that is a thing that he could just do with getting done. Yeah, would you uh, agree? Yeah, yeah. He's he's not someone who lets things mentally sort of weigh him down, but that's that's a record. Do you know what I mean? So that it's going to be on his mind. I'd love him to get it against United. I think that's that's. Do you know how some things in football just feel like they're perfect? That seems like that would be the ideal situation for it um, but if he wants to get four at the weekend we won't complain like. no no no, no, no. <laughs> score all you want get, get 205 against United I'm fine yeah number 207 against but United like, so. I don't know that Sheffield game I just think that was set up to make him fail um, he's he just looked like he couldn't get anything off he only had one real chance and that was the volley that just went straight at the keeper so you know it. it is what it is I'm not overly concerned about it he will start and I think in this kind of game where Palace's fullbacks tend to come up the pitch a bit more. He's going to have that space in behind him, and obviously, depending who's next to him, he's going to get plenty of chances along with the midfield. So, not really a concern. It, is, it might be on his mind slightly, but I, I think he's too much a professional and too much of a, a not a perfectionist. But he's just he's too good at what he does to maybe let that weigh him down. And I suppose as well, he's, he's he still he hasn't scored a goal for a couple of games. God bless him. I mean, oh my God, would I be like two games or something without most Salah scoring a goal or something? But he's still being highly effective. He's he's done okay against Crystal Palace in the past as well. He's got just seven goals against these. I mean, he's, I mean, and he's got a hat trick when he came on as a substitute. Yeah, he's, he's, he's got all <laughs> kinds going for. He's, he, listen, he's done great against everyone. He's freaking most Salah. He often does. But seven goals in ten games against Crystal Palace, he's got. So he, he likes playing against them. Like I say, I'm just looking now. I can bring that up for you actually. Um, he scored two in the four three. He scored two in the seven nil. Uh, so he's gone, uh, and then he scored in the three nil uh, uh, September twenty twenty one. Last time he mm-hmm. got he got bagged against them, but he's, he's done all right for them against them. Um, are you expecting goal two hundred at the weekend? Because he, has, he hasn't scored since last, which for Mo Salah is a drought. <laughs> it's like two games or something, but for Mo Salah, given his high standards, maybe it is one that you're, you're thinking, I wonder if he is just playing on his mind a little bit. He didn't look too happy with getting brought off when he came off against Sheffield United, so no. that doesn't really bear well for Crystal Palace. Because mm. when that tends to happen, he normally he like goes into Hulk mode, does need <laughs> the next game. So I think we'll be I think we might get a couple I think we might get a couple on Saturday just because Jürgen took him off on Wednesday night. So, yeah. He doesn't, like, he doesn't like coming off Liverpool. Uh, the interesting one on the other side, then, Lewis, we move over. Lewis Diaz was the same, he got taken off too. Yeah. Um, does that suggest he's probably in the mix to start? Cody Gapplow played 89, and he came off very late on the mm, Cody yeah. Gapplow. But are we getting the sense that maybe that, that's a hint that there's probably going to be Lewis Diaz on the left? I think it has to be, really. There's no one really. Like you mentioned Gakpo, I don't think he particularly did well when he was on the left wing a few weeks ago. I think Diaz is pretty much the nailed on starter for most games. And look, you, you mentioned there, Salah didn't enjoy being subbed off. No one does. You know, it's, we've got a winning mentality in the squad. I'm happy when players are annoyed when they come off. Yeah. Uh, I think Diaz would feel the exact same as Salah. He'll be annoyed that he couldn't contribute more to the game. Him coming off, like you mentioned, the time that he did is pretty clear indicator. He's our most professional left winger we've got. He's one of the best players we've got in that front line. So. Yeah, I, just, I think him, him and Salah nailed on start as the biggest concern is in the middle is who partners them. Go on then, who partners them? Well, I, I think it's going to be Nunez yeah. just because I, rotation predominantly but I also think that he's lucky he's not suspended by the way. <laughs> honestly, honestly I am honestly right a scissor kicks challenge to win the ball in the 90th not minute not wrong with it win. that <laughs> ball and crossing it in and, and I've that never... is the best it's the most Nunes thing ever and then telling the ref nah go and check the VAR yeah, it's sound blow the he, he was only on the pitch for like 23 minutes but yeah. he, he, like this is the thing with Nunes we laugh and it's funny but like there you go, there's another assist for Darwin. He had a shot, he, had, yeah. he gets a shot away again, which the goal he makes a good save on. Like, you can't, I think he had more of an impact on that game than Lewis Diaz had, for example. 100%. And maybe Cody Apple was good at dropping in and stuff, but in terms of like an attack and threat, 
Darwin just does things. It's a goal or assist every single game. Like yeah. you don't know what he, he owes Crystal Palace one. He got sent off against them last year as well. Yeah. I wonder that where that where he's at with that. But it, it does feel like it's going to be Darwin. I, I agree with you. And again, when Darwin plays, things do happen. Yeah, and look, he's no. You can criticize Darwin for his finishing at times. He is, I've never gone from pissed off at someone to so, suddenly loving them in that quick of a time. But one thing you can't question is his commitment. He's got such desire to win the ball back, to have a go at goal. And I think against that Palace line with a depleted squad, uh, a back line, which has got like Nathaniel Klein in it, there's no Rob Holden, etc. He's going to really run them ragged and it's going to give Salah that space to really thrive. So give Nunez the opportunity in this match. Um, he, he's one of those people who he shows that the atmosphere of the opposition fans doesn't get to him. He, it doesn't bother him. He's one of well, yeah, exactly. He does. He's one of the most confident players you're going to see in the squad. So it's the perfect environment for him. Uh, bring Gakpo on a little bit later on when you want to shore things up in midfield. So get Nunez on, get him the goal, and just you know get rid of the the sushi prawn hair thing that he had. The two braids <laughs> in the back and like that. No, I wasn't overly keen. I was all. I, I was keen. Did you? <laughs> yeah, I like it. It. yeah, yeah. You've got to score, though. You got you, but but yeah, I liked it. I just thought. We've got an ice cream, and I'm saying, ice cream, it's, the, it's December, what's going on there? Oh, cool. Yeah, maybe it is, yeah, it's, it's cold, but I was off, I'm all for it. I just think this game feels a more Nunes game than a Gapo game as for now. Gapo, what Gapo's really going to do, and he, he, he could ask him to go again, listen, we're, they're footy players, they can play games, Gapo hasn't played that many minutes recently, they've all been looked after, really. Gapo does the whole, keep the ball. If you're worried about going to kiss the palace and quieting them down, Gapo, you don't do that. Just walk into midfield and just just overload the Sheffield United. That is the argument for Cody Gapo. Yeah. And he, listen, and he's he's a good player. I don't even like this. Isn't a a knock him. He's, he's scoring goals. He scored a few goals this season too. That's the case. If you were going to pick Cody Gapo, it would be you know what someone who's just going to drop in deep to collect the ball, stop Palace overloading Liverpool in the middle. That that would be the Gapo argument, I guess. Mm. Yeah, it will be. But I just like I said, I think we want to start off. On the front foot on Saturday, I think we definitely want to go rock and roll purple to start. And I think that's Nunes for me. Yep. Um, I I also I tweeted on Wednesday night when I was watching Sheffield United. Like you can say what you want about Nunes's misses, but we just look more dangerous when he's on the pitch. Yeah. We just look we just like look ten times more dangerous when he's there because of what he does. He's such a good all round player for us, and you can tell the rest of the team now look for Nunes. Mm. They look for his runs because they know that he's going to cause problems. And I, th- I think he's bringing the best out in Salah now when Salah's on the pitch as well. He, they're getting up quite a quite a nice partnership, Salah and Nunes. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. We'll see how, how that one pans out then. Um, so we, we think, I think, if we're right in saying we, we, our team is we're using goal, we'll find out later by the manager, but. Costas, Canate, Costas, Van Dijk, Canate, Trent. We're saying Enzo, mm. Gravenberg. I want to say Gravenberg, but I, at the same time, I don't see a world where Sobosly gets dropped just because he's so, so good. Do both Sobosly and Gravenberg. Yeah. Do you reckon that'd be the sort of the one we're sort of leaning towards? Do you reckon? Yeah, okay, I'm with that. Yeah. I wouldn't be shocked if it's Elliot. We'll see how Sobosly rocks up. Mm. Salah Diaz. Nunez. Nunez okay that's a good team I'm alright with that one um, we'll get your score predictions for the game at the end guys before we do obviously it's the the next round of the Premier League games it's week 16 going into the, the games then Arsenal sit top of the league on 36 points Liverpool is second on 34 points Aston Villa on thir- in third rather on 32 points Manchester City fourth on 30 points and then you've got Spurs and Man United both level on 27 points it's very congested there at the top of the mm. table um Fixtures wise, then Liverpool go first. You know, say first if you win, you're, you're whole saving. You get to watch everything else unfold. Um, I suppose a lot of eyes from that point onwards, Ian, will be on Arsenal's trip to Aston Villa. Aston Villa are the best home team in the league at the minute. Joking with us, like they, they haven't lost the game. Most they've won every single home game this mm. season. I think it's is a sixteen on the run or something. Yeah, like something they've won that. home games. Absolutely phenomenal home record. They just beat in the champions and battered them one 0 Flattered yeah. Manchester yeah. City. Yeah. It really did. 100%. It really did. Arsenal just got past Luton and now they get to go to Villa. It's a real test of Arsenal. So I keep expecting Arsenal to fall away. I've been thinking for a while, but they're showing no signs of it. Mm. They're finding ways. Listen. The, the glass half empty would be they keep having to go to the well very yeah. early mm-hmm. on the glass half full is but they're doing it they're getting yeah. it done they're getting these points that is a big test going to Aston Villa that's like a champions test we'll see I, I reckon they're going to get on there 
I, I think it's going to be a draw, but I think the big test for Arsenal is when they drop points, when they lose, is what their reaction is to that. I think the difference between Liverpool and, Liverpool and a Man City and an Arsenal at the moment is that if Liverpool lose, they then they tend to go on a run. Hmm. Same with Man City, although they don't seem to be doing that right now with the last four games. It's Arsenal's reaction to a defeat and... You never know. That might come this weekend. Yeah, you know, they, they beat New, they got beat by Newcastle, and they've, they've gone, they've gone win with. They have won four, but I'm just looking at the scores here. The as you get beat one 0 at Newcastle, they get mm. they beat Burnley quite come to three one. They scrape one at Brentford one nil. They then they weren't convincing. I don't think a home to Wolves two one. Yeah. Then they with Declan Rice eight, eighty whatever ninety seventh mm. minute winner against Luton. So they are getting the job done. Yeah. But on the flip side, Villa. Listen, there's a chance if Villa win, I'll go back to the table here. Villa have got a chance to leave for Liverpool. Like if Liverpool slip up, Aston Villa. Are, they, I don't know what their ambitions are. I doubt it's titled yet. This but I, yeah. I, they've got serious aspirations. They've top fours mm. certainly within their means. They keep winning at home. It, it's not going to be an easy game. We'll see, it, it, how do you see that one going? Oh, I'm saying if Arsenal I'll, win, it's a big win. It's a fucking big. Win. You, yeah. you, I think at that point we'd all have to go. You know what? This is this is for real. Yeah, if yeah. They go there and then the seventeen game winning. We'll make this you know sixteen game win and run. I think everyone would have to give them a little bit more respect because I still think at the moment everyone's eyes are still can't, can't, glancing at Manchester City. Yeah, yeah. But Arsenal are looking at stands a little bit like the real deal. Yeah, and Arsenal. The only thing I would say, I think the Arsenal one is last season we saw this and they slipped off towards the end. But now they've got strength and depth. If one player comes out, there's another player just as good or slightly worse to come in. And I think the Villa trip. I, as much as I want to say, I think Villa are going to keep the home win, uh, the home winning run going. I think Arsenal. I think this will be the game where they win it and they really solidify oh, I need themselves. The big boys as, of- Arsenal played the way. Uh, their away record's really good. By the way, they're probably the best away team, but they went to... Did they play Chelsea away? Dave, I'm just going back to the start of the season. Let's have a little look away games. They went to Brentford and won. They drew at Chelsea. They got beat at Newcastle. Mm. Even then, though, they should have won that game. They were beating Newcastle quite... Yeah, so yeah, so they haven't really played a big away game. This is the biggest mm. away game they've had in terms of so far in the league. Obviously, they beat Manchester City, but they beat them at home. Mm. They drew with Spurs at home, so it is a big challenge. They're a good team, but you're right. I think this weekend is one where everyone goes either are okay or like wow, okay. Mm. Yeah, um, that, that's I was worried about. I, was yeah, like, yeah. I we didn't know who they played the way because that's where I think Arsenal tend to struggle when they have, because. You, look, you only have to look at them when they come to Anfield. Yeah. They're like a complete, they can have yeah. a really great season. Yeah, their away record's really good. It's worth mentioning that yeah. their away record's been really good in the last year. They've probably yeah. been the best away team. And you are right. It's, it's, it's a challenge. It's certainly a challenge for yeah. them. Yeah, and it's, it's those last-minute winners that prove who champions are. Well, like we did against Villa in 1920. You know, we, those... We've just done it at home. Yeah, yeah literally, <laughs> we've just done it. We're, we're the experts at it, but yeah. Arsenal are getting those results now. They did it against United. They did it against Luton. So this game is the acid test. This is going to really see where we're up to. And either way, one of those two teams is dropping points. So can, we need to take advantage. Can Luton do it again? Host of Manchester City. I mean, <laughs> no, like, I, mm, Man City now are four games in the Premier League while to win. It's a loss and three draws in their last four games, which is unheard of, really, for Manchester City. They haven't done that for a long time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it would be the story of stories if Luton could make it five. Mm. We're not holding our breath though, really. No, I mean, the, the thing as well that people need to consider is that, yeah, they've not won in four, but three of those four teams were what? Us, Tottenham, and there was another like, big one I can't quite remember off the top of my head, Chelsea. Yeah. So it's not like they've they've done it to really like bottom side teams like Sheffield and stuff, but I, I just think that's a bit of a step too far. City, Luton, I think are going to get nervous going into that game. and It's also... It's just... The midweek thing, and you know, like they're not used to it. City, I like they they ran their bollocks off on Tuesday night for ninety seven minutes and came up empty. Now to to get to go again, it must be like they'll be awful. And there's not Luton got nothing to lose, but I think we're all expecting Manchester City to write that uh, well, ship comfortably as well. I would imagine. Yeah. An interesting one though is Newcastle Spurs as well. Mm. Well, it's actually Spurs Newcastle. Spurs on the back of this, you know, this mad record where they haven't won the last five games, even though they've been one up in them. Yeah. Just absolutely bananas record. They've got Newcastle just got beat uh, Thursday evening, and they, they both play um, on Sun- it's Sunday, a Super Sunday on Sky Sports R four. It the Spurs the wheels have kind of fell off quick here, haven't they? Yeah. It's a hangover from winning the league in September. That's why. <laughs> it's, you know, it's... Yeah, getting all the players on the pitch with the kids. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, but I think that's down to the squad being... It's the same with Newcastle yesterday at Everton. It's Indeed, everyone's injured. And <laughs> I'm really excited to see them go up against each other, not because they're both, you know, really, really good teams, just they are, but because they're both so depleted. I just, I just really looking forward to how they adapt and how they actually face each other with such weak squads at the moment. And it's exciting football they both play, so... Be an interesting one to see how that one all pans out right then. Fingers crossed. But there is a chance here, by the way. And going back to it, because we are first. The negative is the half 12 is blah, blah. We went through before. If you win, you're, you're won, you're done. Yeah. You, you go to Aston Villa, do us a favour, go, go and stop Arsenal. If Liverpool win, there's a very good chance. You know, uh, they could end the they could end the weekend top of the league. You know, it's a good chance that Arsenal don't pick up all three points at Villa Park. So that is the thing that Liverpool got in their favour. They can go to Arsenal. You're going to Villa Park, and we've just overtook it in the league. Like there's the there's the a, a perfect psychological boost for the Reds, even if they needed any extra. I, I think they'd be well up for. It. I think Jurgen loved them right. Jurgen seems particularly bitey lately because he's mm. he seems well up for things. He seems like he's. Don't want to say enjoying it because of the way he's being in press conferences <laughs> and in interviews, but he's he's well up for it now. I think I think Jürgen can smell blood a little bit now because yeah. he's looking at he's looking he's looking over at City and he's thinking, listen, I know Arsenal top now, but you've all you constantly got to aim for City. If you're getting above City, you're doing okay. Yeah. So he's he's smelling blood a little bit, Jürgen and. If he's smelling blood, the players are going to be smelling blood. Mm. Van Dijk smelling blood this year. Van Dijk's Van Dijk, and he's back to it. He, he, yeah. he, he looks like a man who really wants to lift a big shiny trophy at the end of the season, doesn't he? He's, yeah. he's, he's, feeling, he's feeling a little bit. Right then, with all that being said, I'm going to get your predictions actually for a couple of games before ours. Right, yeah. Villa Arsenal. 2-2. Two, 3-1 two. Arsenal. Wow, OK. 1-0 Aston Villa. I, I'm going for I reckon I'm going to go. I'm going to little back them to, <laughs> back them to sneak it out. <laughs> City five, Luton one. Yeah, you know what? I was actually going to say that as well. <laughs> Luton will get one in like the first couple of minutes, and everyone will go, "Yes, come ahead." No, Ellen Harland is going to feast. I, I'll God. be cancelled. I'll say three one. There's some, there's some, <laughs> there, are some there are some stats that need padding for Ellen. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's got his eye on another golden boots. Uh, and uh, let's do Tottenham Newcastle. Um, I think that's going to be a bit of a shot out for Tottenham if I'm being like, I think Tottenham are going to get like a 3-0 or something but it's very okay. out there but I just Newcastle didn't look convincing against Everton yesterday and the way Tottenham play the high line the constant pressure I mean Newcastle might crumble a bit okay I'm going to go 1-1 one, one. I think Newcastle are finding out what it's like how much of a different beast there is when you're playing in the Champions League when they said we're going we're back and they were saying last season and we're going to be great again next season and all of us were going <laughs> Wait till you playing in the Champions League. They could, yeah. but they are struggling with injuries. Yeah, do, do you know, we really didn't really touch on Man United. They're in and around the top four mix at yeah. the moment as well. Guessing we, Bournemouth isn't an easy game, but they're not actually, Man United are actually in form. Yeah. They're not actually playing particularly great play, but they are winning games. I'm yeah. going to say, I'm going to go for two all Tottenham Newcastle, and I'm going to say Man United beat Bournemouth 2 0. No. Yeah, you can you can yeah, get a lot of I, I, I reckon I reckon one nil McTominay. Obviously, yeah, he's the the, the, the friggin Scottish Scot Stephen Gerrard. That's <laughs> that's blasphemy. <laughs> on today of all days as well, Gerrard Olympiacos anniversary. Oh, yeah, I'm um, yeah, I'm saying like a one nil Man United. I'm have to go back and check the comments on this video after <laughs> these fixtures because I've. Yeah, Don't worry. set myself up for murder it's fine mate it's, it's predictions of, we all have them speaking of which then the main one now we've done that Ian Liverpool going to Selhurst Park Crystal Palace how do you see it going I can see one our favourite scoreline conceding first again like we always do yeah, yeah. <laughs> big fans of that aren't we um, I'm going to say 2-0 um, Palace just haven't got the players at the moment Hodgson we all know Hodgson so They'll just sit back and defend. I think. I think. I think. I think two 0 and I think we score both in the first half, and we expect the onslaught, and it just doesn't come. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I'm not sure with that they're for it, and I am predicting that Salah gets his 200th goal this weekend with a penalty. Oh, I hope so. A little, I little, hope a little so, like. Mo Salah penalty. So there's my predictions. There's the guards and everything. Let us know in the comment section below, guys, if you're not watching this live. If you're listening on a, on a podcast uh, version, then do tweet to us or get into us via our Facebook page, Instagram. Let us know your predictions for all the games at the weekend as well. Come and join us later on for the new show. And then for the game itself on Saturday afternoon, the watch along, you've got Chris and Paul and Dan in the studio. So set your alarm clocks nice and early if you're over in America. 
bed. I can only say really, really early. I mean, it's early for us. We're having breakfast while we're doing the shows at times, for goodness sake. But yeah, do come and join us for the watch along. Do come and join us for all the post match content as well. And we'll be back with another preview show ahead of Liverpool's rather meaningless but rather fun trip to Brussels in the Europa League next week. See you all soon. Thank you so very, very much for checking out the video. If you enjoyed it, drop a like. Uh, the season is now well underway. If you need extra Red Men content, be it podcasts, videos, documentaries, interviews, and general shows, fill your boots on redmenplus.com today. <laughs>